Hello, everyone, and welcome. We really appreciate you joining us today for another of the Bosch webinar series in our summer showcase. Today, we're going to be uh, focused on performance-based solutions. Um, so for your typical performance space, whether it's a, a church or performing arts venue, uh, we're going to do a, a deep dive into some of the offering that might be appropriate for those. Uh, today, joining us is Robert Ferguson and Greg Campagnone. We're going to take us uh, through those uh, offerings in a little bit more detail. Uh, a few things to consider for the webinar. Um, this webinar is being recorded, so keep mindful of that. We have uh, definitely enabled uh, the chat function within the webinar, uh, so please write your questions at any time, and uh, we will get to them at the end. But we highly encourage those questions and uh, would love to hear from you. So uh, my name is Sean Schallenberger. I'm the Director of Sales for Install the Audio. Um, and uh, today we have joining us Robert Ferguson. He is the Marketing Manager for Electric Voice and Dynacord uh, Install Portfolio. Uh, Robert's been with us for uh, quite a while. Uh, as you can see by his stream, he does not look anything like that picture. Uh, he's definitely got COVID face. Uh, was that a high school picture? That, um, that you got posted there. He looks so young. Yeah, pretty um, close. <laughs> anyway, Rob, uh, Rob's been with us quite a while, starting in inside sales and now uh, graduating to a marketing manager and uh, has a, a very good uh, in-depth knowledge of the portfolio. Uh, also, we have joining us uh, Greg Campagnon. Uh, Greg is a director of sales for RTS, our intercom portfolio. And uh, Greg started off as a, a director uh, in a regional role uh, covering the entire portfolio and it is now covering all of North America for uh, RTS. So what we want to learn today is uh, really dig into um, just uh, the, the overall portfolio from Electric Voice Dynacord and RTS and how that might apply to uh, performance space applications. So we're going to go through EV, uh, EV loudspeakers, Dynacord Electronics, RTS Intercom, and then uh, we're going to take you through some performance space solutions examples. So kind of lay out exactly uh, from a portfolio standpoint why, what might actually work in what type of space. So just a little bit about Bosch as a whole. Um, we are uh, a very large privately held company, just over 400,000 employees. Uh, almost 70,000 of those dedicated to research and development. Um, big part of our business still is in mobility solutions, so the automotive industry. But uh, over the last few years, we've been uh, sig significantly uh, focusing more on energy and building technologies. Uh, one of the things I'm very proud of about Bosch is that uh, it is uh, run by a charitable organization. And that actually gives us the ability to give back to the communities that we are involved in, something uh, I think we're all very proud of. Um, so if we dig down into the building technologies portfolio a little bit further, uh, we can see that uh, you know, one of the goals that we have at Bosch is to make our buildings and our cities a lot safer. And uh, we can do this by having them be more connected, um, uh, be more networked, and uh, there's lots of different um, uh, disciplines that we can actually do to make that happen. So today, we can actually connect our video, our intrusion, our access, uh, management software, cloud-based services. We can tie in our public address for notifications uh, and our fire alarm systems and have all of those work together to make our buildings much safer, uh, buildings where we work, live, uh, shop, et cetera. So if we drill down into the uh, audio portfolio a little bit further, just to clarify, if you see something Bosch branded, it's generally going to be a conference and discussion-based system. It's going to be commercial speakers um, for the public address applications and then the electronics for uh, public address. Uh, Telex is our 911 dispatch solution uh, as well as aviation headsets. RTS is our intercom, production intercom uh, brand. And then Dynacord is our premium brand for DSP and uh, amplification. And then Electro Voice is premium speakers and uh, premium microphones. So with that said, um, I think I'm going to hand that over to Rob Ferguson. He is going to take us through the EV portfolio in a little bit more detail. 
Thanks, Sean, and uh, thank you all for joining me, uh, as well as the rest of the team here. So I'll talk a little bit more about uh, ElectroVoice and then our, uh, our sister brand, Dynacord, here, but uh, certainly we'll be focusing more on performance audio. You're probably already familiar with EV or ElectroVoice, and it is a part of the greater Bosch uh, family of brands there. So um, we do have a lot of disciplines, and this is one of the first uh, sessions we've done in a while, uh, kind of focusing on performance audio spaces um, and talking more than just the loudspeakers. So we'll, uh, Greg will uh, tag in here in a little bit and talk a little bit more about intercom, which is commonly used in a lot of these spaces. So uh, you're probably familiar with EV a little bit. Uh, there is a wide range of loudspeakers. Uh, we'll focus a little bit more on uh, kind of our integrator install friendly uh, products, but um, also we are pretty well known on the commercial side if you're pretty familiar with EVIDs. So uh, in a lot of these performance spaces, you might find uh, you have some distributed audio. So whether that's uh, an additional ancillary area where we're just you know sending a little bit of audio to another space, um, there are some uh, commercial loudspeakers which are available as well. But today we'll be focusing a little bit more on foreground audio. So uh, whether this is kind of an outdoor space, indoor space, uh, whether that's theater, house of worship, or even sports, um, there's quite a wide range of options out there. And certainly, you want to pick the right loudspeakers for your space. So you want to have the right tool uh, for your space. So first, I'll talk a little bit about our EV Innovation Series. It's kind of our fixed install integrator series. They all feature rotatable waveguides, uh, multiple coverage patterns for most of the models, uh, they do come in black and white uh, as, as kind of standard finishes. And of course, there are varying levels of weatherization. And of course, uh, there's a lot of different ways you can array and configure these. So we do have a lot of array kits and some installation flexibility based on what is whatever is required for that specific performance space. So uh, to go through kind of the point source offerings within uh, EV Innovation, up here at the top, we have our EVU uh, range, which is kind of our ultra compact. That's what the U stands for. Uh, there's a six and a half inch all the way up to a dual eight. So we do have some options there. Again, they do come in black and white. And all of these loudspeakers actually ship with a U bracket, which is not pictured uh, in the image that you see there, but it does come with a U bracket. Uh, there is some additional accessories you could add. Uh, if we wanted to use this more as a distributed loudspeaker, there is a uh, transformer you can add to it for a 70 or 100 volt application. And a lot of times it is used for the footprint. Um, but of course, there are some M8s on there. So if we wanted to use uh, a third-party mounting gear, or if we just wanted to suspend the loudspeaker, we have that ability. But again, it does come with the U-bracket. A lot of times you'll find that EVU is often used uh, in tandem with the other EV innovation products. Uh, so it'll often be uh, under balcony, which is it's a lot of times what I, I see it most frequently as, so EVU under balcony. <laughs> um, but it's also used for a lot of fills, and sometimes it is used for mains. And of course, I mentioned distributed audio as well. Uh, so that's EVU up there at the top, um, kind of in between EVF and EVU performance-wise is EVC, um, which is a new addition to the EV Innovation family. I mean, it's been with us for a little bit of time now, uh, a couple of years now, but it's been wildly successful so far, but certainly an affordable price point. And for each one of these models, uh, there's two different coverage patterns, the two most popular coverage patterns. If you feel you need more coverage patterns, you want to step up into the EVF line. So there's an 8-inch, 12-inch, uh, and 15 inch uh, two-way model and then of course at the very end there you see our variable intensity loudspeaker there uh, the EVC uh, dash BI which we have a feature there and it's a unique uh, loudspeaker that has a unique shape and waveguide to actually cover a rectangular area uh, with a single source so it is very unique so if you find yourself in a scenario where I want to use one source and I want limited variation in uh, SPL throughout the room the variable intensity loudspeaker might be a choice for you but these all do come in black and white as well as weatherized options um, and of course, there is a, a wide range of uh, insulation accessories for, for mounting, of course. Uh, EVF is kind of the next step up. So if we need a little bit more output, a little more SPL, uh, they are a little bit of a bigger footprint, certainly, um, but it is still a pretty compact enclosure considering the performance that you get out of them. Um, and there are a variety of coverage patterns available uh, for each of the models. So you do have a lot of flexibility to really dial in exactly uh, what I need for that space. And certainly uh, clear, intelligible uh, performance audio is very important in a lot of the spaces that we'll talk about here at the end. Um, but there are 12 inch and 15 inch models and there's the standard model and then the high definition model uh, which will be indicated either with an S for standard and D for high definition. It's just some upgraded internal components. Uh, for the most part, we find that the high definition models are the most popular, but if you find yourself in a little bit of a budget pinch, um, we do have standard models available as well. 
Now these do come in varying levels of uh, weatherization. So uh, whether that's just a covered outdoor uh, scenario, like an amphitheater of some kind, or full on outdoor exposure, like you see a lot in, in sports uh, facilities and things like that. Uh, we also have a horn loaded device there, EVH, um, also coming in a standard and high definition model. There is uh, six coverage patterns for EVH, so we can really dial in exactly what we want, but it is a very unique uh, loudspeaker in the, in the fact that uh, for EV, it actually has a rotatable, not only does it have a rotatable waveguide on the HF, but also on the midband as well. So we do have some really directive control. So if it's really reverberant space, uh, or we, we, we really need to uh, control uh, exactly where we want the coverage to go, um, EVH is, is a perfect uh, device to use that. And it's a very natural, natural sounding horn loaded device, unlike a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of tools out that you find out there in the market from other manufacturers. And then of course there at the bottom, uh, we do have a wide range of subwoofers available. So, uh, and you can mix and match uh, all of these products, like I mentioned, uh, they do come in varying levels of weatherization, different finishes. Uh, we can even do custom colors if we need to. Um, but certainly there are a lot of array kits. I can even uh, array EVF and EVH and a subwoofer all within a horizontal or vertical array. And we do have rigging kits for that available. So a uh, lot of flexibility here. Obviously, uh, you know, if you are interested in any of the models or learning more about the series, we do have a lot more information up on the website if you want to learn more. So we talked a little bit about the point source offerings uh, within the EV innovation range, and certainly ElectroVoice has a lot more options than that. Um, you might be familiar with a lot of the portable line or some of the older classics that you see out there like the SX or ZX series, but uh, we also have a wide range of line arrays. So you might need that in your space. A lot of performance spaces do require a line array, and uh, certainly it's a very popular, uh, it's very popular not only for aesthetics, but of course for performance. And obviously you'll find it uh, in house worship all the way to outdoor sporting facilities and stadiums, things of that nature. Uh, but you'll see quite a wide range of, of EV line arrays out there in the market and a wide variety of performance applications. But um, there are quite a few choices um, and you'll notice that. Um, one thing that they do all share in common is that they are pretty compact, right? We wanna maintain sight lines because that's still very important in a lot of these performance spaces that we'll touch on, um, but certainly we don't wanna compromise performance. So. Um, but they are pretty compact considering uh, the punch that you do get out of these. So uh, quite, a, quite a wide range of models within our line array portfolio. Up here at the top, we have EVA, kind of our passive array, um, dual eight inch. And uh, it's a very unique, loud, uh, unique line array in the sense that actually all the rigging is internal, so it's hidden. Uh, it's very popular for performance spaces because it, you can create uh, kind of a seamless column without uh, all of that rigging out, out on the outside. And sometimes it's not always ideal. Um, and you can actually, since this does come in black or white, even fully fiberglass, um, you can actually get a smooth white column, which we find is very popular in a lot of performance spaces where we want to match the interior of, of, uh, of the space. But another unique thing about EVA is that they are all rated at 16 ohms, right? So it's a little bit of a higher impedance rating than you probably expect. However, one of the nice things about that is that I can run several of these uh, together on one single amplifier channel. So I could run four or five, even more um, on a single amplifier channel. We even have attenuation modules so that you can shade uh, some of the lower boxes so that we're, we're able to uh, attenuate the, the, the SPL that we're hitting the front, uh, the front couple rows of the audience there. So something to keep in mind it is really economical in that sense just because of that and certainly a great performing loudspeaker and a lot of times it's used in tandem with a lot of the EV innovation uh, families as, as they're kind of tuned quite similarly. So you'll find that. And of course, uh, we do have some subwoofers to match there. Uh, kind of a step above that would be XLE. That's our single eight inch. Um, there is uh, certainly you could use any of these subwoofers depending on how you wanted to, but uh, we do offer a cardioid subwoofer that does go right in, in line if I did wanted to hang that with XLE. So XLE is kind of our single eight. XLD is our dual eight inch option, has some very unique horizontal steering control um, that makes it ideal for a lot of spaces. Not only does it have a compact enclosure and small footprint, uh, but uh, it also does have a, a lot of control uh, horizontally all the way down to 200 hertz. So uh, we find that it's really popular uh, for a lot of spaces, especially stadiums um, uh, where we want that, want that control. And of course, it's a very similar footprint to XLE. You can use it in tandem with that, uh, that cardioid sub as well. XLC is uh, something that you've seen quite a bit in the market, and uh, it's in a lot of installs, a lot of, uh, you know, it's even in NFL stadiums, you'll find it's in a, quite a few of them, but um, 
XLC is our kind of our three-way system. Uh, and it's also a uh, dual 15-inch subwoofer that you can pair with it. Certainly, again, like I mentioned, you could use the other subwoofers in the other families. Um, and then down there at the bottom, we have X-Line Advance, uh, which is kind of our, our flagship. It is a great performing uh, line array system that has been has gotten quite a bit of traction. We do have kind of production models with integrated rigging, which you see pictured there, uh, but we do have full-on install models now. So if we do need something that's full-on fiberglass or we want it in, in white, which wasn't previously available, that's available now. Um, and then, of course, there is a little bit of different rigging, so we can get those really extreme angles uh, for certain for certain uh, performance audio applications. So, and a little bit more affordable, in the sense that uh, it doesn't have that integrated rigging that's designed to go up and down all the time. But within the range, uh, within the production models, we also do have the dual 15-inch flying subwoofer, um, and then we have the dual 18-inch ground stack subwoofer. On the install side, we do have a dual 18 that is flyable. So that's kind of the line array portfolio. Obviously, uh, quite a bit to look at there uh, based on uh, what you need for your performance space, but we do have a wide range to choose from all in a compact enclosure. So another thing to, to keep in mind with, with ElectroVoice is uh, not only are we a loudspeaker manufacturer, and we really, really know our loudspeakers, obviously, uh, as, as kind of our expertise. We also do have expertise in electronics. Uh, our team over in Straubing, Germany, actually uh, designs and develops all of our um, our electronics. And previously, they were always branded ElectroVoice. So you might be familiar with getting an EV amp with your EV loudspeaker. Um, but going forward, um, all of our electronics are actually branded Dynacord. And if you guys have been paying attention to what we've been doing the past couple of years, is we've introduced quite a, a wide range of, of models uh, that are Dynacord branded. So if you're thinking about an EV loudspeaker, um, I would automatically take a look at the Dynacord electronics. Not only are they really superior to a lot of things in the market and they're kind of cutting edge because they're newer, um, but we also have presets for almost every single EV loudspeaker there is. So spend a lot less time with you messing around trying to tune a system. You know, you can just sweeten that right there at the end because we do have a lot of FIR uh, filters and FIR drive already built in. So uh, feel free to take a look at Dynacord, but keep in mind those are the two sister brands, and certainly you could use Dynacord Electronics in any retrofit situation where you're not using an EV loudspeaker. So, so let's talk a little bit about Dynacord. Um, certainly we talked about ElectroVoice and the loudspeakers themselves, but certainly uh, there is quite a wide range available, and we have been continually investing into this portfolio, so I think you'll see more from us to come, including we actually just launched a product uh, last week, so stay stay tuned for that. Certainly there are some sessions in the summer showcase where you can learn more about that, but uh, up here at the top we have our C and L series amplifiers, and we'll go through some examples where we're using some C series amplifiers, but they do have some professional level DSP already preloaded in these amplifiers. So if you're familiar with the CPS two channel amplifiers or the Q series amplifiers that EV uh, previously made. These were the replacements. Um, certainly, they're enhanced models, but at a similar price point, and they have DSP at them, including FIR drive. And of course, I, you do have two software choices with the CNL series amplifiers, um, and uh, that's either Mark, which is kind of a simpler software, and then SonicQ, which I also feel is very simple, but you have the ability to use SonicQ with all of the other electronics, so SonicQ is, is kind of the way going forward. IPX is our multi-channel option. Uh, certainly, they're Dante networked. They're incredibly energy efficient. They utilize a unique technology called EcoRail. Uh, so for light duty uh, applications, whether that's background music or if it's an idle or you're just sending a pilot tone, uh, the amplifier actually significantly consumes less power, up to 50%, uh, we find on average. But in certain applications, we find that it saves a lot more compared to predecessor amplifiers. But essentially, that amplifier is not running on the high voltage rail the entire time. Um, uh, during those light duty applications that actually uh, operates on a lower voltage rail. And then when you do need the full output of the amplifier, it seamlessly switches to that higher voltage rail. Um, and there's no audible switching, there's, you don't really notice it, and there's no configuration needed. So something to keep in mind, we all, all want to be green. And uh, you know, certainly with the power that you can get out of IPX, uh, I mean, that might be a concern. And certainly you want to pass that off on to the end user uh, in terms of their cost savings for their energy bill. But they're very reliable amplifiers, and they're, they're full 96K uh, amplifiers and offer some superior audio quality. For more mobile applications, we offer TGX. Um, kind of like the C and L series amplifiers, C is more for your installs, L is more for live. For IPX and TGX, it's pretty similar. IPX is more designed for install. TGX is more designed for mobile applications. So we do have four channel options under the hood. They're quite similar to IPX, but we do even offer a turnkey system rack. So if you find yourself in a performance space where I need to be mobile with the system, so maybe I'm rolling a rack in and out, or um, 
you know, it, it, do we just want to get uh, some of the electronics out of the way because it's a multi-purpose space? You might want to look at TGX as an option. We do offer turnkey system racks with power distribution and, and switches, and it's quite affordable then rather than building your own rack, we've kind of built that into the cost of, of putting that together. Um, and then you'll see uh, we do have a new DSP uh, matrix mix engine called MXE5, um, which will be coming out here shortly. Uh, certainly, uh, there are some specific sessions on MXE5. There's actually one tomorrow and one on Thursday. So if you are registered for the summer showcase, which of course you are because you're here, um, feel free to check out MXE5. It's our newest product. Uh, and uh, I, won't, I won't give you too much information, but um, if you got questions about that, just let me know. And then, of course, uh, all of this can be operated and controlled and configured with SonicQ, kind of our newest sound system software. And uh, really, all of the amplifiers can be used there, including LNC series now. Uh, previously, they weren't able to be there, but with the new firmware update, you can use LNC series within SonicQ. So I can use LNC, IPX, TGX, the new MXE5. Uh, so we have an, an entire ecosystem here, um, and it's incredibly easy to use software. Um, I found it quite easy. I, uh, I, I got right into it, but it works left to right, and ev everything kind of makes sense. We find that even uh, the most uh, beginning users and getting into tuning their own sound systems find it quite intuitive, uh, and the, the advanced guys absolutely love it. So uh, SonicQ is uh, uh, definitely the choice for all of these Dynacord electronics. And then, of course, uh, we do offer a QSYS plugin. Uh, also, we do have a lot of uh, successful installations out there in the field too. So we do offer a QSYS plugin for IPX as well as MXE5. Um, and uh, you know, we want to play friendly with the market. Certainly, uh, IPX uh, as well as MXE5 works on Dante and then uh, AES70 control. But QSYS is uh, kind of a standard out there, but it is proprietary. So. Uh, we've developed a really great plugin that that kind of operates seamlessly, so don't be afraid to get away from that. If you're used to working in a QSYS environment or if the application requires it, um, we do have a way to give you a superior amplifier to coexist in that ecosystem. So just keep that in mind. So anyway, so that was Electrovoice and Dynacord. I'll, I'll jump back in here in just a moment to talk through some application examples. Um, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and tag Greg Campagnon in to talk to us a little bit about RTS Intercom. All right. Thanks, Rob. Uh, thanks for including RTS in the discussion. Um, I know a lot of times uh, in, with the communication system is the last thing people think of with the design. You know, audio is the exciting part. Um, it's very subject subjective. Um, but when we all know during a live performance, when something happens, the staff has to run around and communicate with each other. So, it's always the last thing in the design, but it's the first thing that we go to when we need uh, an emergency, right? So I, I, I want to thank you again for having the RTS included here. We've been uh, leading the intercom market for over 40 years. In the broadcast world, we're known as the workhorse of the industry. If you look at any studio in North America, you'll see an RTS key panel being used for production communication. And we have a lot of uh, feathers in our cap at many NFL championship games and Olympic broadcasts over the years, as you probably know. Uh, but we don't stop at broadcast. What we want to show here today is that in different performing uh, venues, uh, RTS can be used, and, it, and they are being used widely in theater and house of worship applications. You know, when, when the show has to go on, you need a re reliable product, and RTS is that. Our portfolio is pretty vast. We have uh, engines that drive our communication systems known as the matrix uh, heart of the system. We have a wide range of ports. These are uh, uh, connections that you can put different users onto the mainframe. We can do anything from 16 ports all the way up to 1,024 ports with full redundant operation. And that is the largest frame available in the industry right now. The size and the makeup of the system will always come down to two fundamental questions. And keep this in mind as, as Rob and I are going, to, going through these scenarios. Two questions. How many people need to speak to each other and how many independent conversations you'll need? Those two questions will determine the size of the system and ultimately the size of the frame or the heart of the system. We have a wireless complement too. I'll talk about the, the history that we have with our wireless intercom in a second. Um, we, we offer the broadest se selection in the intercom uh, manufacturers out there. Uh, 
Our UHF product is a standard in the industry, and we also have a UHF VHF split band product that I'll talk about in a second. Wired belt packs, we have a, a variety of them to be used. And the cool thing about our wired belt packs, they're universal. So you can actually plug a RTS uh, wired belt pack onto an existing Studio Technologies or ClearCom system, and it will auto sense and uh, be used completely, uh, no problem free on the existing system that you have at your venue. And then finally, we have a bunch of key panels where with a bigger system, we can actually dial in and talk to specific people on the key panel, on the party line, using uh, the, these products through our matrix systems, depending on your needs. So about our uh, wireless products, it's probably uh, our flagship products that we kind of uh, are foot in the door a lot of times because of the history that we've had with ElectroVoice and Telex wireless microphones we took that technology and put it into our intercom systems. As a matter of fact, uh, we have the widest range of wireless products on the market. Uh, 20 years ago, we introduced the BTR 800 system. It's our anniversary for that product. And really the 800 is known as the industry standard for wireless intercom. It sounds good. It works every time you plug it in. And we have an incredible range with the BTR 800 belt packs. We all know in 2018, the FCC spectrum auction drastically changed the wireless landscape for North America. So this affected IEMs, wireless microphones and such, and it also affected us wireless intercom uh, users. So we did a couple things to combat that. We launched our license-free decked product called Romeo. You can see it here on the screen. Romeo connects via Dante right into our RTS matrix frame matrix frames. We'll see a couple of those examples here coming up. In addition, our engineering team created new frequency bands in the UHF spectrum so that we could slide the BTR 800 lower down below the 600 megahertz range and use that product uh, to continue to use it over all these years. And then this year, we introduced the BTR 30 product. This is a UHF VHF split band product. Because of the shrinking uh, spectrum up in the UHF, we move the product down to transmit in the VHF uh, and then receive in the UHF. So now we have a product that we can slide in into very uh, frequency heavy situations. The 30 is based on the same footprint as the 800, simple to use belt pack base station system. And uh, we do have a session on that on Thursday, uh, 4 p.m. Central. If you'd like to learn more about that BTR30 product, please join that session on Thursday. So I think we're gonna go through a couple of situations where we could use all of our products, RTS, EV, and Dynacord, and Rob's gonna start us off with the first application. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for taking us through a little bit of RTS there. Um, certainly uh, a, a staple in the industry, but certainly uh, one of the uh, brands of the family here. So we're going to go through a couple application examples. We'll start a little bit with some worship examples. We'll dive into maybe some more performing arts examples and then kind of close with some sports examples. So let's go ahead and just start it right off here. Um, so for this example, and certainly with all of these examples, every venue uh, varies certainly different coverage patterns, different tools are needed for the project. Um, and, and many of you are familiar with that, but certainly we can give you recommendations as required. So for this one, we kind of chose a standard uh, house of worship or smaller house of worship is what we kind of determined as a small house of worship. But we've got a couple of EVF 1122Ds uh, for the mains here. So we got that left and right, uh, which you can see there. And then of course we do have a uh, sub to complement that. That's the EVF 2151D. That's a dual 15 inch subwoofer, uh, which has some great response. Um, and that's in kind of there in the center, a center, a san, a center hung sub. Um, and then uh, we also have some EVUs there to complement uh, the main system. Like I kind of mentioned earlier, a lot of the EV innovation products can be used in tandem uh, to really fill out the entire space. But maybe the mains won't hit all of the areas, right? So maybe we have a balcony uh, in this scenario, right? So we have um, some fills and delays here uh, with EVU and then EVC as kind of a, a bigger footprint, loudspeaker, a little bit more output. Uh, but certainly we have the rigging accessories uh, to make this all happen. So we have some EV innovation products here, uh, certainly at the forefront here uh, 
from Electro Voice, and then from on the Dynacord side, we're going to power this all with some C-series amplifiers. Uh, certainly very affordable, have DSP, um, you know, some professional DSP and all the presets, right, already preloaded for all these loudspeakers and the configuration that they're in. Um, so we've got a C3600 for mains, uh, one C3600 for subs, uh, for the one sub, uh, the dual 15, and then a C1800 to kind of manage the fills and delays. So uh, certainly a kind of a complete package here on the loudspeaker side. So uh, definitely all the foreground audio. Now let's let's step into RTS a little bit and talk a little bit about the communications behind the scenes for a small house of worship. So for a very basic setup, this is probably as basic as you can go, guys. And uh, remember the question that I asked earlier, how many people need to talk and how many conversations do you need? If you have a basically a, a small group of people and you only need one channel of conversation or one audio line, uh, this is a very basic setup. Here we have a PS20 power supply powering our BP4000 single channel belt packs. And then we have a single muff headset on each of the persons uh, wearing a belt pack. Now this would be a one channel party line. We call it a PL or a TW system. Uh, the users can push to talk and they can actually lock the talk button on also so that they can be hands free and use their hands and have a full duplex conversation among all the people on the belt packs. It's so very basic, very cost effective and very easy to install. This can all be daisy chained together. The belt packs have an in and an out and we can daisy chain together with a standard XLR cable or we can do a home run situation where we line all of the XLRs back to the power supply. So very easy setup for a small house of worship. Perfect, thanks, Greg. Uh, let's move over into maybe a medium house of worship. Again, all of these examples are, are just examples. It'll vary depending on what venue you have, but let's say for this example, we have the trim height to put in a line array um, and it made, made a lot more sense as opposed to maybe doing a delay uh, you know, further on down. Um, but certainly this kind of made sense for this example. So for this example, we have uh, eight total EVA 2082, so that's a dual eight inch passive uh, uh, loudspeaker, right? So uh, we've got four aside, and then um, we've got attenuation modules uh, on the bottom two boxes to ensure that we're able to attenuate. Now, the nice thing, like I mentioned previously with EVA, is that um, uh, I actually have the ability to drive all four modules for left and right on one amplifier. So that's one C3600 in this example. And then we put some attenuation modules on the bottom box to ensure that we're not uh, that we're able to adjust the SPL level for the front couple rows, right? So it makes it really cost effective. You wouldn't think you'd be able to drive uh, an entire line array with just one two-channel amplifier, but you absolutely can, making this very economical uh, uh, for uh, the end user here, right in the end. Of course, we're going to complement this with some uh, EVA subwoofers because it makes sense in terms of uh, in terms of the rigging, um, but also it. These, uh, these, these arrays are very smooth, right? There you can, there's no external frame or rigging. It's all hidden internally. So they look like nice smooth columns. So you could even get a white, a couple white columns here uh, that kind of blend right in with the architecture here for this house of worship. So uh, certainly uh, a great way to get into a line array. Obviously a lot of people like the aesthetic, but it also worked for this space. Um, and, and this EVA offers kind of an economical option for that. So, and of course, powered by some uh, C3600s here for both the mains, and then we have two for the subwoofers. But I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and pass it back over to Greg to talk a little bit about uh, what you can expect in maybe a little bit of a larger uh, medium-sized house of worship. Sure. So this is uh, what I call a basic plus. So we've taken the basic party line from the small venue, and we've added a wireless complement. So simply by adding a BTR-800 to the wired party line that we had before, we connect it with just another XLR line. And now we have uh, users that can wear the wireless belt packs and be completely untethered in the venue. So in this situation, we have uh, maybe a front of house person at that main station up in the top center. We have a call light indicator there also, so that some of the users can actually hit a button on their belt pack and notify the person at the front of house and not make any noise that he just gets a indication via the light. We then have four people over to the left on wireless belt packs, completely untethered. And then we can actually have another station someplace else in the venue. Maybe the music director down in the pulpit has a, uh, a station that he wants. 
So it's a little bit of a uh, add, added on to that basic party line system where we've added another user station and some wireless uh, people. So it gives you a little bit more uh, uh, versatility on the users in this situation and what their jobs are during the performance or the service. All right. So let's move into kind of the, the large uh, house of worship, right? So this is our bigger congregation. Uh, certainly maybe we have some live performance bands and we really care about having the most premium audio quality that we can do can have. So with Electro Voice, we picked X-Line Advanced Install, our, our flagship line array, uh, certainly on the install side. Um, and of course, uh, for, for this example and it being a larger space, uh, we have 24 boxes uh, total here for, for tops here. So for the mains that you can see fo photographed here or uh, in the image here. And we've got two hangs of uh, 12, right, left and right. And then of course, to complement that, we have the X-Line Advanced Install Sub. Uh, which is the dual 18 and can that can be flown and obviously uh, we could ground stack it or, or, or stash it under the stage if we needed to. But for this example, let's say we're flying it um, and then all of this would be powered by IPX. Um, maybe we're going to interact with maybe a console or we're going to send some Dante. Certainly I, IPX does operate on Dante and as well as AES 70 control. Um, so it allows us not only to have a network scenario here for the electronics, but also allows us to marry in maybe with some other equipment that's running on Dante in the space. So, um, so this is an excellent advanced install. Certainly there are some uh, rigging kits which you can add here, or you can use a custom frame depending on what we're looking at. Um, but I think for the House of Worship example, we're going to use the rigging kits, which you can see pictured here. Um, and it does come in black and white. So uh, if we do want to kind of uh, keep it white, which is very popular for House of Worship, or maybe black works best because of the aesthetics of the space, um, certainly have both choices. And for this example, uh, we're uh, obviously biamping the loudspeakers because it's X2, uh, X2i, and uh, we've got, uh, we're basically shading them in three box zones so that we have some control over each zone. But uh, one of the nice things I think with using a line array here is certainly that I don't have to use a variety of, of point source loudspeakers, um, maybe with some delays and stuff. But since we have the trim height and uh, the space is big enough, it makes a lot more sense to put it in a line array uh, in, in one of these larger spaces. So that is the large house of worship for the loudspeaker side. Let's talk a little bit about the RTS solution for uh, similar space. So the large house of worship, uh, we also know as mega churches, a lot of these facilities have what is similar to a broadcast studio in them, correct? So we picked the Odin matrix product to start as the heart of this system. Here we have an Odin system, full Dante IP connectivity, where we are connected to some key panels that are fixed positions throughout the facil facility during the service. And then we have um, some of the classic party line two wire up in the upper left using the power supply again and the BP325 belt packs. And then now we've incorporated the Romeo IP-based decked wireless product. These guys have a key panel on their belt pack, so they can actually dial into anyone on the, on the system, anywhere in the matrix, anywhere um, in the positions in the, at the event. One of the other things that we brought over from the broadcast community is an ISB or an inter interruptible foldback or feedback. In this case, what we can do is send an IFB, a signal to the minister's ear if they're wearing an IEM uh, or a uh, IFB earpiece in their ear so that a director or someone can actually speak to the minister directly in his ear like we do with talent on air and live TV. And they can say something like, hey, the guest in the front row, the parishioner in the front row um, is is a special guest today and the minister can call that person out and actually mention them in the sermon. So we found that that's a very cool feature that you can have with a full uh, situation with Odin like this with the matrix. Nice, pretty impressive system here. Let's, uh, let's move into maybe more performing arts. Um, certainly uh, House of Worship is definitely a focus for us and uh, definitely a big uh, a big focus uh, for the solutions that we offer. But moving in more performance uh, space, so this example is kind of general multi-purpose auditorium. It could be uh, your high school auditorium. It could be a community theater. Uh, there's a couple different options, but for this space, uh, we've got a couple different um, a couple uh, different tools here in the works. Here uh, again, we're kind of picking from our EV innovation. Uh, 
family uh, within EV, right? So we've got two clusters uh, left and right, and then we do have a center main there as well. So we do have uh, left, right, center here. And uh, one of the nice things uh, with uh, the EV Innovation products, as you'll notice on left and right, we've actually created clusters. So we've got um, some EVF 1122s on each side of a 2151D subwoofer. And we actually do make rigging kits uh, to make that seamless. So I can actually uh, take, even though these loudspeakers are kind of different footprints, right, in terms of width, uh, you'll, you'll notice that they are almost identical uh, when we go to actually put them together into a, a rig kit. So it looks like one smooth cluster on left and right. So uh, that's one nice thing, right? We're able to cluster everything together. Otherwise, we'd be looking at uh, quite a few different hangs independently, um, you know, within the space. So left, right, center here, subs on left and right. And then uh, we've got maybe some fill, uh, some fills and then delays. So we're using EVU, uh, you know, as, as some fills, maybe some under balcony fills, and then uh, maybe above the balcony, let's say this is a two-tiered balcony, um, we're using EVU as kind of the delays there for that upper balcony. So uh, all of this is powered by C-series amplifiers. Certainly you could use IPX, especially for a system where we have a variety of loudspeakers like this. Um, but for this one, we did use a variety of C-series amplifiers because it made sense at the price point. Um, and we were able to do that uh, all pretty seamlessly here. So again, got some C-series amps and um, some EV Innovation uh, point source loudspeakers driving this entire system for a multi-purpose auditorium. So uh, with that, I'm gonna hand it back over to Greg to talk about what he would see in, uh, in terms of a uh, communication system. So don't need to overthink it, right? Let's use the same party line uh, setup that we did for the small house of worship, but this time let's do it as a two channel system. So in a multi-purpose auditorium, we might have uh, uh, the sound crew on channel one, conversation one, and then we might have the lighting guys over on channel two. And we would each give them a, a two-channel belt pack, and they can talk to uh, either the sound crew or the lighting crew at a time, or just give them one channel, and uh, they would be dedicated to just their staff. But the cool thing is with the director, we would give them a BP-325 belt pack, which we don't have on the, on the diagram here, but the director could actually talk to both sound and lighting and listen to both sound and lighting staffs at the same exact time. So again, very simple party line setup with a PS20, but it, we call it a two channel system now with two staffs on two different channels. Don't, again, don't need to overthink it. Keep it as simple as possible. Nice. Thanks, Craig. Let's, uh, let's move into maybe a performing arts theater. So maybe this is a little bit of a bigger space. Uh, and uh, again, we actually picked EVA as kind of the option here. Uh, two hangs of four also work for this space as well. It's uh, similar in size and then paired with some 2151D subs. Again, the rigging is all internal, uh, so it's a, it creates a very smooth column. And of course, it's a very economical solution uh, for this performing arts theater because I have the ability to run uh, all, the entire main system here, this these two line arrays uh, with just one 3600 and we've got some attenuation modules on the bottom boxes there so that we're able to shade the front of the audience again. Uh, you know, we get line array performance at a very entry level price and of course driven by some C-series amplifiers. We're able to control all of this through SonicQ or through uh, Mark uh, software so that it's nice and easy for everyone to use. But a uh, pretty, pretty simple system, but again, uh, a line array solution for performing arts theater. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the RTS solution for the same space. Okay, again, let's take our two staffs, our lighting and our sound crew and add a wireless complement. So here's our two channel system with the director with the call light uh, indicator, maybe at front of house. Um, and we've added the BTR two channel BTR 800 product. So now we can have the sound guys on channel one again, and the lighting guys can be on channel two, but the lighting guys are now up in the catwalk and they're not tethered to any cable. So they have a TR 800 belt pack and they are completely un un unobtrusive, uh, with any wires so that they don't trip or anything up on the catwalk. And over to the right, we have a station that maybe we could put in a dressing room this time because it's a little bit of a bigger theater. We have a dressing room and we want to indicate to those people back there that we have 10 minutes to go on stage. So we can use that speaker station. The director can call out to the dressing room and the actors can get ready and come out on stage at the proper time. 
Perfect. So let's move into the outdoor amphitheater. Certainly outdoor spaces are very popular. So, um, and, and we're seeing a lot more people get out there, but um, for an outdoor amphitheater, we probably need some level of weatherization, which um, although a lot of manufacturers do offer some weatherized line arrays and some weatherized loudspeakers, uh, EV does offer a wide range on almost all of their install loudspeakers to be in some level of weatherization. So uh, for this example, it's an outdoor amphitheater. It's a decent sized space. We went with the flagship here. We went with X-Line Advanced Install because um, that's what made the most sense for this space. But of course, um, it also offers full on fiberglass. So for this example, uh, we've got some fiberglass X-Line Advanced Install uh, paired together. Uh, so we've got X2i subs, our biampable tops there. Our, and then for our subs, we have the dual 18 inch subwoofer there, which can be flown, or we could actually stash it under the stage if we needed to. And there are some ground stack options available as well. Um, but this will all be powered by IPX. Uh, certainly our fully Dante networked amplifiers, multi-channel amplifiers, and it's what makes the most sense here. We've got a decent amount of amp channels because we're bi-amping the loudspeakers and we were shading, uh, you know, we've got three box zones here, as you can see in the diagram. Um, but certainly uh, totally weatherized if we're, whether this is, uh, you know, semi, uh, a semi-enclosed outdoor amphitheater, or if it's fully exposed where we think the loudspeakers will get some direct rain. Um, we don't have to worry about that with the X-Line Advanced Install uh, because it does offer a full-on uh, IP55 rating for our fiberglass uh, options here. But anyways, I'll, uh, I'll pass this over to Greg to talk about what he would see for an outdoor amphitheater with RTS. So with an outdoor amphitheater, I think we have many different positions, again, like the, the bigger house of worship, um, mimicking a broadcast studio again. So I've used the Odin matrix here uh, to drive the system, multiple, multiple facilities that we can add to the uh, audio router or the Odin uh, via IP. And we're showcasing the Romeo here again, the Romeo wireless key panels, so that the, the director at the Odin uh, brain or the, the front of house or wherever we have that can actually call any position in the facility, any person point to point on a private conversation. And in return, the Romeo uh, users can do the same on their belt pack. They could talk right back to the producer, the director. They could talk back to different people in the lighting staff and have private conversations point to point. So we're showcasing the Romeo here added to the Odin product in various, various positions around a, an amphitheater. All right, well, let's move over into uh, some sports examples and we'll focus a little bit on some outdoor examples specifically. So the first one that we have here uh, from uh, the loudspeaker side for EV and Dynacord is, um, let's say this is um, maybe an outdoor high school football or soccer field or, or baseball field, something of that kind. Um, and uh, we want to use, uh, utilize either the press box or maybe some lighting poles that are near the press box. And uh, you can actually use some SX600 uh, loudspeakers for this. There's uh, the transformer version and the non-transformer version. So if we do feel it's a long cable run, you can use the uh, PIX, uh, which is the transformer option. Um, it is a very unique loudspeaker. So as you can kind of see in the picture and in the bottom uh, corner, you will see the SX600. Um, it actually utilizes a unique uh, mount there, a strong arm mount, which I, which I could easily mount to a pole or fix to a position, and it kind of comes all together here. But it is weatherized. It's IP44. Um, it does offer an incredible weather rating. It does have some great directive control. So for this example, uh, we're using two for the home bleachers. So let's say there's a pole, um, but right behind the press box, we'll use two for the home bleachers facing down, and then one uh, across the field to the visitor bleachers to ensure we get some coverage even to the visitors that are there. So uh, certainly a great option here, and we're driving this all with an IPX54 um, uh, for, for this example. So let's move over to the RTS solution for uh, maybe a smaller outdoor sports venue. Yep, so I like this one, Rob. This is, this is the classic BTR800. I'm a big fan of it. Sold many of them over my 15 years here at Bosch. Um, when you need a reliable wireless intercom product, you throw it down and the thing works. Here we have two BTRs linked together with standard XLR cable, allowing us to have eight users, a very simple setup, eight users on a two-channel wireless intercom system. 
Um, we can get a good six to 800 feet line of, uh, line of sight to the antennas so these guys can walk wherever they need to. If they need to get coverage under a tunnel, let's say, coming out to the sports venue stadium, we can add extra antennas down there and the users can actually cover that area uh, using those antennas. Um, we, can put, we can put this in a mobile application and have an Iraq and we can take it from venue to venue. When you show up at a venue and there's a ClearCom system there, you simply plug it in with an XLR system, uh, XLR cable, and now you have eight wireless users plugged into the existing wireless, wired system in the venue. So I'm a big fan of this product. I'm a big fan of this type of setup for a quick run and go uh, wireless intercom communication system. Nice, yeah, that looks real simple. A lot mm -hmm. of users. So let's move over into maybe a kind of a medium outdoor sports venue. So maybe a little bit larger. Uh, it could be also could be a high school, maybe a little collegiate level. Um, but certainly, um, you know, obviously we could scale all the way up to a stadium. But let's let's focus on uh, on what we see more day to day, um, and and that's a lot of the high school sports stadiums that we see out there. But and it could be some other uh, community sports as well. But for this example. Uh, this would kind of be the step up from the SX600 example I just talked about, and we're going to step right into the EV Innovation product. Uh, specifically, we will use EVF and EVH, uh, as well as the EVF 2151D subwoofer. Um, again, we can get these in all, all full-on fiberglass for full uh, outdoor exposure. If there was a, an overhang, we could use a PI version, um, which is semi-weatherized. Uh, but for this example, let's assume that it's fully weatherized or fully exposed to rain. And for this example, Almost identical to the SX600s, we'll use the two EVF 1152Ds for the home bleachers and the EVH, since it's horn, load, horn loaded and has some little bit more directivity, uh, we'll shoot that right across the field to the visitor audience there. Um, and then of course we uh, will complement uh, the subwoofer there, especially for the home stands to, to have that 2151D there. Um, and then this will be powered by an IPX108. We chose an eight channel because we are bi-amping the loudspeakers. Uh, obviously we're looking for the most optimal sound quality there to really get the fans going there. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the RTS solution for the same space. Yep, and this is the same type of setup that we use for the larger house of worship or the larger outdoor amphitheater. What we're showing here, guys, is that we can set up different zones for the Romeo product. So in the programming of the Odin, uh, we can set up cells where we can have users dedicated to certain areas of the venue, um, and they can actually roam, this is how we got the name Romeo, uh, from one zone to another. And you can, you can uh, restrict users from roaming into another area, or you can allow them to go to all the areas. Here we have a three zone setup that you might see at the uh, outdoor uh, sports venue. And again, it all comes down to the basic questions. How many people need to talk and how many people need to talk in different conversations and where are we gonna allow them to go in that venue and be able to talk to each other as a, as a full communication systems for backstage communication. Perfect. Well, uh, certainly there are a lot more applications out there and uh, every venue varies certainly and every, uh, every application might have some different needs. And uh, although uh, I learned a lot from Greg today um, on the RTS side, certainly if you do wanna talk to uh, some experts, we do have a whole team of application engineers for both loudspeakers, electronics, um, as well as the RTS portions, which we talked about. So uh, just so you know that there is a system design questionnaire available on the EV website right under tech support, it's a fillable PDF. Just some basic contact information, some drawings, really what you're looking to do. And within that, certainly you can put in all the information you want from the loudspeaker system, but there is a checkbox that you can actually uh, ask a little bit more about RTS um, uh, for an RTS solution or anything else that you might need in there from the Bosch Communications family of brands. And the email to send that to is right on the form. It's buv.design at us.bosch.com. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and open up for questions in a little bit of a Q&A session here. And I'll have uh, Sean grill Greg and I on some questions. We'll see if uh, see if we get some right, good ones. Yeah, we got some fastballs um, and uh, not a ton of time. So if we go over, guys, uh, hang with me if you can, because I do have a, an announcement on the next slide uh, that I definitely want to get to. Um, so first question is uh, for you, Rob. Is the MXE5, our, our brand new DSP engine, uh, going to be replacing the NetMax, which is our kind of legacy DSP. 
So, um, yes and no. I love as answering questions like this. So, um, certainly, uh, MXE is a series. So, MXE 5 will be the first uh, product within the MXE series. So, down the road, you'll see us add to the MXE series uh, in terms of, you know, uh, inputs, outputs, uh, in terms of what the matrix size is. Um, the MXE 5 is a 24 by 24 matrix mix engine, and it will be a replacement, I think, for a lot of applications. And one of the nice things, too, is it does work right in SonicQ, and we can operate and configure it uh, right within SonicQ. So uh, it's not a replacement for NetMax today. Um, for a lot of applications, it will be. We'll keep NetMax around until later on when we introduce a bigger brother of MXE 5, um, in which case then, long term, yes, uh, MXE, uh, the MXE series is the, uh, the future. Um, uh, and we'll replace that max eventually. Good question. Uh, maybe a follow-up to uh, has SonicQ, the new control platform, uh, replaced IrisNet? Again, yes and no. <laughs> um, so SonicQ is uh, IrisNet was a platform for a long time, and we added a lot of features to it. And um, certainly, although it is a dated platform, there were a lot of things you could do with it. So with SonicQ. You can do almost everything you can do with IrisNet today in terms of configuring a system, um, but there's a couple features that um, you still have to use IrisNet uh, for, and you can use IrisNet and SonicQ in tandem for certain projects, but uh, like creating a custom loudspeaker preset, um, some custom views, there are a couple of things that aren't there um, today, but however, uh, I think by the end of this year, SonicQ will have almost all of those features in there, and you'll be able to, uh, to do that. So if you've got more specific questions, I know we don't have a lot of time, I'd be happy to walk you through what are the differences between IrisNet and SonicQ, but they are two platforms that still exist, and you can still use IrisNet today as well. But long-term SonicQ, yes, will be the replacement for IrisNet. All right, one more for you, Rob. Um, and I'm going to paraphrase this one a little bit. Um, will we be able to uh, adjust and have our own FIR filters within the software uh, at some point. So will we have more control, I guess, is what the question is, over the FIR uh, filters of presets uh, somewhere down the road? Yes, we will. So that, that is one feature that's a great example of a feature that's available in IrisNet um, that's not available in SonicQ today. But long term, yes, you will be able to adjust that, create your own uh, custom presets um, that will be down the road. And I'm hoping towards the end of this year, maybe early into next year, um, will we have a new version of SonicQ um, that we'll be able to integrate that in. I've, I've, I've certain, we're certainly pushing for that hard here and making sure we get to reach that timeline, but uh, that's also a great question, a great example. Okay, Greg, you ready? Yeah, I must have, I must have created some excitement. People are asking <laughs> intercom questions. Uh, you, you always create excitement. No matter what you get. <laughs> um, so I'm an EV and Dynacore dealer. How can I go about getting more teams? Uh, RTS party line headsets, wireless, the BTRs we talked about, and the broadcast headsets you already have access to. Uh, as an EV dealer, you, you have access to it. It's in your EV professional price sheet. If you want to get in uh, a design with an Odin, as we looked at today, just get in touch with one of us and we'll uh, help you with the design because it takes a little more handholding and programming. Uh, and commissioning after the sale, we will definitely get you involved with the correct people to help you do that, and we'll get you pricing and help you out with your project. Gotcha. Okay, uh, we got another one here. What about IP rated access points for outdoor use? Uh, RTS 1800, same about our uh, TR 1800. Good, good question, guys. Um, the the belt packs are rated IP53, so, so they can handle droplets of water, but they are not waterproof by any means. Um, the access points, the same thing. Um, to, in order to put them outdoor, because I did show some stadium situations here, we do have a third party uh, partner that helps us uh, mount those up on the wall or a pole, and you actually put the access point in a, in a waterproof uh, uh, container and it, it fits completely, uh, and it, it fits completely solid, and we run the wires out, and it's, it's, it's a good uh, solution for that. But out of the box, the APs and the belt packs are not waterproof or weatherproof. We would use a, a third-party uh, partner to help us make that happen. Got it. Thanks, Greg. Uh, 